five stocks that we will buy in 2024 if the price hits where we love it. Let's go figure it out. Stock number one, the Googly Moogly. Now, Mo, Mm -hmm. you and I have been talking about Google a lot lately. Yeah, we have. Google fell to a low of 85.57 on January 6th. You know what the funny part was? My price target at the time was 85 bucks. It never hit there, skyrocketed, and I think I regret it, not because of where it skyrocketed to. Today it's sitting at 133.72. More about I don't think I gave enough value to Google. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Google uh, all-time high of 152. I remember we made a video back then, said we were interested sub 100, and people said it'll never go sub 100. That's correct. You're an idiot. And look, it went to 85 bucks. Not to say we were right, just saying, guys, we don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen in these companies. You know, great company like Google, $1.7 trillion market cap, same <laughs> enterprise value right here. That yeah. means there's essentially no debt on the company. Right. They can take their cash and pay it all off. Companies like that are around for the long haul. That's what's great. I have a list of 30 or 40 companies in my phone that I want to own forever. They all have great balance sheets because those kind of companies stay around the longest. Yes, they do. It's okay. Let's go to the eight pillars quick. Okay. I'm sure it looks pretty good. It looks great except for our two metrics, but. And the question is, is uh, let's call it a 30 PE. Is that too much? Is that too much? Remember guys, very important. If two companies are exactly the same, One's growing 5% a year. One's going to grow 20% a year. Everything else is the same. Which one would you pay more money for? 20% a year growth, of course. Same thing here. We have to look at this and yeah, 30 could be fine if they're growing 20% a year. Okay, so let's see what analysts think they're going to grow. Well, their EPS is going to grow about 15 or 20% a year according to analysts. Solid. Right? Wow, look at that revenue growth. And the revenue growth, high single digits, low double digits. Like I said, I think I screwed up but let's go take a look at Stock Analyzer tool because I really want to look at this thing and pull up what we did in the past. 12-4. I did it 10 days ago. Um, yep. So I did 5, 8, and 11% revenue growth. Mo, what'd you do? I did 4, 7, and 10. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay. I did 22, 24, and 26% profit margin. 20, 23, 26. Okay. Free cash flow, I did the same thing. I did the same thing. PE, 17, 20, 23, 17, 20, 23. I'm going to change that. Here I did 20, 23, 26. I think so. Yeah. And again, guys, it's not about sitting there and saying, I'm forcing myself to get myself a number. What it is is saying, Google dominates. They have the two largest search engines in the world, google.com and youtube.com. They own internet marketing, the ads game. Am I willing to pay a massive premium to own this company? Yes, I am. I look at this like... You know, when Warren Buffett bought Coke in 1987, it was selling for 30 times earnings. I look at Google as like... It's in that category. I think so. I just think it has a massive moat. So why would I discount it? Yeah. So for desired annual return, I'm actually going to do 9, 10.5, and 12%. What'd you do, Mo? I did 10, 12, and 14%. Okay. Prices? Man, look at this. Yeah. A low of 109, a high of 200, a middle price of 150. Okay, I have a low of 85, high of 156, middle 117. Watch. So I got, I got a decision to make. Forget about 2024. Do I start a position now? I don't know. Guys, next stock, Apple. Apple, as we're making this video, just hit an all-time high, almost $200 a share, 199.20. Mo is laughing. All-time high, 199.61 was today. This is a company that Warren Buffett owns. My personal belief is... Maybe he's increased it now, but before he was probably buying sub 140. I don't know, but this is another massive moat business. Eight pillars, same as Google. Everything is a check mark except for your valuations. Yep. 35 and 38 times earn, cash flow and earnings. Analyst estimates, not as optimistic as Google's. No. No. I do you think Google has a much higher, now granted, 16% increase in subscription revenue. That's the big thing. That's I think the big thing. Transition more to a subscription based it's a higher margin business, yeah. guys. So instead of getting lower margins on hardware, you're getting higher margins on subscription. Because I think I've read something like the the Mac computer revenue was down like fifteen yeah, percent. It was, it was some big time. Yeah. But iPhone sales were up three percent. Right. Subscription sales, subscription revenue was up sixteen mm-hmm. percent. Guys, we want more subscription revenue. Yep. It's a high margin business. That's Apple's future. They just raised their prices. Okay. Let's go run Stock Analyzer on Apple. Let's see the last time we did this. I did it, oh, today? Yesterday, I mean? Interesting. Let's go to the one. Okay, I'll do yesterday's. 
I think probably because it hit all-time high, I wanted to see how it looked. Mm. I did revenue growth of, over the next 10 years of 3, 6, and 9%. I did 6, 9, and 12. Wow, really? Yeah. Subscriptions, man. <laughs> okay. Profit margin. But look at this, Mo. Here's my argument. Okay. 16% revenue growth in subscriptions and overall revenue declined in the last year. But remember, the entire computer market was at a big high and it's coming back down. I'll give you that. So I'll give you that. Maybe that's skewed. Maybe all of computers are skewed, just stabilizing. Okay. Profit margin, 21, 23, and 26 and a half percent. What'd you do, Mo? 20, 23, and 26. And remember, I did higher on the skew to the higher side because of software, because of subscription revenue. If they can really hit that hard, mm -hmm. these revenue numbers could happen. These um, profit margins could happen. For free cash flow, it tends to be higher. I did 24, 25 and a half, and 28 and a half. I actually left it the same. 20, 23, 26. Okay. You be right, though. PE, I did 17, 21, and 25. I'm going to change this. I'm going to do 19, 22, and 26. And I'm going to keep my desired return, basically my margin of safety, 9, 11, and 13. If the low assumptions occur, I'm okay making only 9% return. Middle assumptions occur, 11. High assumptions occur, 13. What'd you do? I did 10, 12, and 14% because, wow. well, 12% revenue growth is big. It is big. So. Hit the analyze button. Guys, I just can't get to it. I'm 90 to 100 on the low side, 166 to 178 in the high side, 120 to 130 in the middle. I'm 100 on the low, 191 on the high, so actually... Not even there today. Yeah. And 138 in the middle. I just think Apple's expensive. Yeah. Stock number three, Microsoft. And guys, before we go any further, we have the software here. We have so many tools we don't even go through on this video. We have the community of thousands of investors, everythingmoney.com, seven day, full access, free trial. Come check it out. Immerse yourself in the software. You're going to love it. Come check it out. Everythingmoney.com. Microsoft, stock number three that we hope falls to our price in 2024 because when it does, we will be buying it like crazy. They hit all-time highs two weeks ago? Um, all-time high. 29th? 29th of, of, of November, yeah. Up 2023. By the way, I love when we added this. Yeah. I love when we added this to our software. Okay, I'm going to go to the eight pillars real quick. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Analyst estimates. Um, not as big, but pretty decent. Going from nine, basically $10 a share to $17 a share. Revenue growing. Oh, pretty good revenue growth. Pretty good revenue growth, yeah. Low double-digit revenue growth. All right, let's go to Stock Analyzer, Mo. I think this one's been a while. Yeah, this I did one. this one in April. I did this one December 4th, actually. So revenue growth. I did 7, 11, and 15. I'm actually going to alter that here. I don't know why I did that one. I'm going to do 6, 9, and 12. That's a lot of revenue growth to do, I think. Yeah, I'm doing the same as you. Profit margin, I did 32, 34, and 36. I'm going to go with that also. Um, that, okay, and then free cash flow is actually a little bit low. Um, free cash flow in the last five years has been lower than profit. Last 10 years has been higher. So I did 28, 30, and 32. Okay. I think I'm going to change that. I think I'm going to do 28, 31, and 34. Okay. PE, 16, 19, and 22. I'm going to do 17, 20, and 23. And then for my desired return, I'm going to do 9, 10.5, and 12. Okay, I did 10, 12, and 14%. So guys, again, we're running through these numbers. Boom. I have a low price of 170 to 190, high price of 320 to 340, middle price of 230 to 250, 260. I'm going to change it on my watch list to 250. This is not the price I'm buying it for. It's going to notify me on the software, on my phone, and over email. That way I can start selling puts at lower prices. That's yeah, a good watch list number. I think so. Yeah. So, guys, still seems expensive. Anything can happen, but it still seems expensive to me. Absolutely. Stock number four, Visa. Visa, Visa, Visa. Visa V. Who doesn't have a Visa in their pocket? Yeah. 260 is the price. $416 billion market cap. It pays 0.9% dividend, which eats up $4 billion of their free cash flow. One thing I like here, Mo, look at that. Higher free cash flow mm -hmm. than income. On both the 12-month and five-year. Yep, on both the 12-month and five-year. Pays a dividend. Great return on invested capital. Great return on invested capital. Great gross profit margin. Yeah, 80% <laughs> with a bottom line margin of 50%. <laughs> Insane. That's crazy. Yeah. Let's see what the eight pillars show. Just same. like everybody else. Yeah. Boy, they bought back a lot of shares, Mo. 28% of shares That's have been bought back. I think this is a smart move for Visa. 
Let's look at analyst estimates, eight eighty four to fourteen dollars a share. You see the common theme here: companies with good balance sheets that are going to be able to survive basically anything. Yeah. And what about a brand? <laughs> Doesn't get much better. Analyst estimates growing EPS from eight eighty a share to fourteen dollars a share. Revenue growth double digits. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go stock analyzer tool. I think it's gonna be a lot different here. Did this one December fourth. I'm gonna do five, nine, and thirteen. Much. Profit margin, I do 48, 50, 0.5, and 53. Free cash flow, 50, 54, and 58. PE. I gotta strike that PE. 18, 21, and 24. And for desired return, same with free cash flow. And for desired return, I want nine. 10.5 and 12. What'd you do, Mo? I did 5, 8, and 11 on revenue growth. Profit margin, 47, 50, 53. Free cash flow margin, 51, 56, 61, which is nuts. PE, 18, 21, 24. Same numbers for price to free cash flow and my desired return, 10, 12, and 14%. I like your revenue growth in low and middle. I changed mine to 5, 8, and, but kept 13 on the high side. Okay. okay? Yep. Here's our prices. We've got a low of 150 to 160, a high of 300 to 327. Wow. So if you believe the high numbers, you're buying this all day and it's going to give you a 15% return. Middle of, one, of 200 to 210. I have my watch list at 200. I think I'm going to change that to 220. Again, not to buy it there, but to notify me so I can start selling puts on it. Probably a pretty good idea. Mine's, yeah. mine's currently at 210. I'll probably make it 220 for the same reason. Last stock, guys, stock number five, Nike. Let's go check it out. I'm wearing Nike shoes right now, so basically I'm an owner of Nike. It's to 121. Um, All-time high, November 5th, 2021, 175. Uh, 52-week low, $88 just three months ago, not it's even. It's only up 3.35% this year, year-to-date. Come on. That's oh, weird. Wow. That is weird. All right. Eight pillars. All right. So, again, You've got these big bad boy numbers. Are these justifiable? That's the question, Mo. Yeah. Is it justifiable to pay basically 40 times earnings and free cash flow? Hmm, I don't know. That's a tough one. You got to decide that. Listen, of course, my, I'm looking at going, how can a company as big as Nike, $185 billion market cap, how can it justify 40 times earnings and, and free cash flow? How could they, can they grow their revenue and profit fast enough to justify that? That's a tough one. It's a very tough one. That's what makes investing not easy. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, even when you look at the revenue growth side, it's about 7%. Man, look at this. Look at the EPS growth. Wow. Big, doubling almost doubling, in the next yeah. five years. Revenue growth. Mid to high single digits. Yeah. Wowzer. Yeah. All right. Let's go to stock analyzer tool. When was the last time you did Nike, Mo? The last time was, let's see here. Mine was November 21st. Uh, mine was a long time ago, like April. So I did four, seven, and 10% revenue growth. Okay, I did five, seven, and nine. Okay. Profit margin, 10 and a quarter, 11, 11.75. Nine and a half, 10 and a half, 11 and a half. Okay, now for free cash flow, I did a little bit lower. Nine and a quarter, 10, 10 and three quarters. I did eight and a half, nine and a half, 10 and a half. PE, I think I'm gonna change this. 15, 17 and a half, and 20. I'm going to do 17, 20, and 23. Okay. Like, it's freaking Nike. I, Why am I giving it 15 on the low side? Yeah, I did 18, 21, and 24. Yeah, I just look at it going, I don't care. I mean, it's Nike, even if they don't, yeah, even if they don't grow, and they said, I'm still willing to pay 17, 18 times earnings for that. Yep. Desire return, I'm doing 9, 10 and a half, and 12. I actually did 10, 11, and 12. Okay. Now, I hit the analyze button. Stock basically even today. Boom. Low price, basically 60. High price, and one of the assumptions is there, 115 and 125. Middle price, 80, 90. I'm going to add it to my watch list at $90 a share okay. as a place to start selling puts on it. Yeah, it's on my watch list at 100. Probably want this thing around 75, 80 bucks. Great. Thank you very much, guys.